Guys, um, appreciate the time today. Uh, we're going to talk about some things that, for a lot of you in the room, is going to be fun. It, it says it right there. It's fundamentals, right? It's things that some of you are already going to know. But as Dwayne said at the beginning, it's always good to talk about stuff and, re and go over stuff again. Now, in 1961, when Vince Lombardi was going to talk to the Green Bay Packers, he stood there in training camp and he held up a football and he said, guys, this is a football. Let's get back to the basics. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to get back to the basics, the fundamentals of leadership. So leadership, it's kind of a big deal. So what is leadership? Well, if you're listening on your calls, Mr. Stamey talked about this a few weeks ago. Leadership is leaders inducing or influencing followers to act for, a certain, for certain goals that represent the values and the motivations, the wants and needs, the aspirations and expectations of both leaders and followers. It's James McGregor Burns. Leadership is influence. If you, if you follow anyone who is an authority on leadership, they will tell you that that is the truth. Leadership is influence. So, what is influence? The definition of influence is the capacity to have an effect on character, development, or behavior of someone or something or the effect itself. My mom said, I don't want you hanging out with that guy. He's a bad influence, right? What is he? He's the ring leader. Am I the only one mom said that? Or I'm the only one that hung out with bad people? <laughs> So what kind of effect are you having on the character, development, and behavior of your service center and your people? You are the leader of your facility. And you're having an effect, good or bad, based on your role with the company. You're having an effect on the character, the development, and the behavior of your service center and your people. Great leaders don't set out to be a leader. They set out to make a difference. It's never about the role. It's always about the goal. Always about the goal. Look, I told the group when I got hired here, I don't care what you call me, right? I just want to make a difference. I just want to be a guy that makes a difference in the company. That's it. So we're going to talk about the foundations of leadership. So before we get there, I got to tell you a little story where all this comes from. And up until a few weeks ago when I shared it with your ops managers, I'd only shared this story with one other person, and that was Dwayne. In all the years I've been doing this, I'd never really opened up and shared this, but I'm going to share it with you. When I was a kid, my, my grandfather was my hero. Everybody had their heroes growing up, whether they were on TV or maybe their dads. My dad traveled a lot when I was a kid, so my grandfather was the male role in my life. He meant the world to me. And I'll never forget, one day we're standing out in his yard, just me and him, and we're out looking over. He had this huge garden and orchard, and you know, because I grew up in the country, right, Bob Hess? And uh, so we're standing there, and he puts his hand on my shoulder out of nowhere, and he said, Tim, I want to tell you something. If you're honest and you work hard, there's nothing in this life you can't do. If you're honest and you work hard, there's nothing in this life you can't do. A few weeks after that, he suffered his first stroke, and not long after that, he passed away. It was almost like he knew I needed to hear that right then at that time. And I've carried that with me my entire career. And over time, it's developed into what I believe is the foundations of leadership, which is excellence and integrity. Excellence and integrity. So let's talk about excellence for a second. Excellence is always being the best you can and can be and doing the best you can do. You can't give more than 100%. You ever hear people say that? It happens on TV all the time. Man, they would give it 110% out there today. How in the world can anybody give more than 100%? 100% is all you can give, right? You can never get back wasted time. So if we don't give 100% today, you can't get it back tomorrow. It's gone. Can't give 150% to make up for the 50% you didn't give today. It's forever lost. And then I want to talk about one more. So this got added in at the last minute, um, right before the ops manager's meeting. And 
One more came from a book that I read. I was reading it at the time. It's called The Power of One More by Ed Milet. And it's a great book, and we're going to talk about books a little bit here in a minute. But basically the premise of this book is, is can I, what can I give one more? What areas can I give one more? If I want to achieve excellence, I should always be looking for the one more thing I can do. The one more. Can I talk to one more driver before I go home? Can I look at one more way of fixing the dock? One more. If you want to read that book, I'll send you a link to it. The enemy of excellence is not bad. The enemy of excellence is good. Good will keep you from being excellent all the time. All the time. Why? Because good allows for excuses. Good allows for excuses. And excellence is always looking for solutions. Always looking for solutions. John Maxwell said, if you can perform at a high level occasionally, you can do it consistently. Don't settle. Don't settle. So you can understand the frustration that your directors have when they look at numbers and they see you killed it today, and a couple days later it gets, we just tanked. That's why, because if we can perform at a high level one day, we can do it every day. We can do it every day. Vince Lombardi said perfection is not attainable, but if we chase perfection, we can catch excellence. There we go. So let's talk about integrity. Integrity is the firm adherence to a code of especially moral or artistic views, incorruptibility. Integrity is determined by what, you, by what you do and who you are regardless of who may be watching. In other words, who you are when you're all by yourself, that's who you are. That determines your integrity. What do you do when nobody's watching? Who are you when nobody's watching? Billy Graham said, integrity means that we are trustworthy and dependable and our character is above reproach. John Maxwell said, integrity is not a given factor in everyone's life. It is a result of self-discipline, inner trust, and a decision to be relentlessly honest in all situations of our lives. So, again, I've been preaching excellence integrity long before I got to Ward. And in my last position that I held, which was the longest 18 months of my life, I preached excellence integrity to a place that just really didn't understand it. So much so that I had a guy that worked for me from New Orleans, Louisiana, who was pure Cajun. Whatever you think Cajun accent is, I promise you his was worse. And he told me one time, he said, you talk about excellence and integrity so much, we're going to put it on your damn tombstone. So well, there it is. Here lies Tim. He believed in excellence and integrity. All right. Let's talk about the characteristics of a great leader. First characteristic is the trustworthy. Trustworthy. Trustworthy means able to be relied on as honest or truthful. How do you build trust? Be caring. Do you care about your people? Because they know whether you do or not. You can say you do all day long, but if you don't actually care for your people, they'll know it. They'll feel it. Be caring. If they believe you care about them, they'll trust you. Be honest. And I used to tell my kids growing up, don't lie to me. Don't lie to me because if you lie to me, I'm going to question everything else you say. Right? If they catch you being dishonest, they will never trust you again. They'll never trust you again. Be honest. Sometimes honest means, guys, I can't talk about that. Sometimes honest means I'm going to have to talk to my boss and make sure that I can disclose that, but I can't talk about that until I do. Be honest. Don't make stuff up. Be transparent. Guys, we're not perfect. You know, I, 
we have to be honest about and transparent about the things that we do wrong and, th and mistakes that we've made. If we come across as knowing everything all the time, nobody's going to trust you. Sometimes you just got to be transparent and say, let me tell you about a time where I really messed up, <laughs> right? Am I the only one that's really messed up? And be consistent. Be consistent. If you want to be trusted by your people, you have to be consistent. We're going to talk about that a little bit more in a little bit. Albert Einstein said, whoever is careless with the truth in small matters cannot be trusted with important matters. Characteristics, accountable. Great leaders are accountable. So what do I mean by that? Accountability means answering for your actions and decisions. Great leaders crave accountability because they understand that it raises the standard of excellence in his or her life. Accountability. We should want to be accountable to other people. I am accountable to Dwayne. Dwayne gives me a lot of freedom. I am, I am free to work and do things in the way I see fit, in the way I want to do. But that man knows what I'm working on and he knows where I am all the time because I make sure he knows. I'm holding myself accountable because there's times when I'll say, we're working on this, and I'll tell him. He doesn't even ask, and I'll just say, I'm going to try to get this to you by Friday. Now, why do I put a deadline on myself? Because it raises the standard of excellence. It's telling him, I'm going to get it done by this time. I'm going to have it done. Be accountable. And look, it's not just about being accountable to the person that you work for. I'm accountable to Morgan. Morgan knows what I'm doing all the time. He knows where I am, what I'm working on, what my plans are for the next week. He knows. I hold myself accountable to him. Sydney will fall into that group. As she comes on board and starts doing her audits, she'll know where I am all the time. I'll know where she is. We'll know we'll be accountable to each other. Leaders who fear or resent accountability reveal his or her own insecurities in regard to their leadership. If you resent accountability, that tells people more than you know. You have to be accountable to other people. Thomas Paine, if you don't know who Thomas Paine is, Thomas Paine was one of our founding fathers, believed to have helped written the Declaration of Independence, even though his name's not on it. A body of men holding themselves accountable to nobody ought to not to be trusted by anybody. If you're not accountable to anybody, why should anybody trust you? Loyal. The great leaders are loyal. Loyal. Loyal means giving or showing firm and constant support or allegiance to a person or institution. So be loyal to your people. Have your people's backs. Be loyal to them. Now, doesn't mean let them get away with things. It just means be loyal to them. Sometimes being loyal to somebody means what? Hold them accountable, which we'll get to here in just a little bit. So be loyal to your people. Be loyal to your peers. The people sitting in this room. Be loyal to each other. Have each other's backs. I talked about this on a call a few weeks ago, if anybody was listening. Call each other. Feed off of each other. You know, if Philadelphia sends you a load that looks like junk, call Bill and talk to him. I promise you that man will get on top of it. But have each other's back. Be loyal to each other. He should know about it before the director knows about it. He should at least get the opportunity to fix it. Be loyal to your leader. To your leader. What does that mean? Yeah, you work for him. It means that at no time should anybody ever hear you say anything bad about your leader. Ever. Ever. You undermine the entire structure of this company if people hear you bad mouthing your leader. You gotta have your leaders back. If you've got an issue with a leader or somebody in this room, you need to talk to them. If that doesn't resolve it, then that man sitting back there will be the guy to talk to. But it's never the people in your facility. Ever. Ever. It undermines everything. 
If they see you undermining authority, you've just given them permission to undermine yours. Be loyal to your leader and to your company. Guys, we should be the ultimate cheerleaders for ward trucking. I've been around a little bit and I've worked in some places that aren't great. We work for one of the best companies in this country. This is a great place to work. It's family owned, 91 years in business. Not going, you just heard the man say he's not going anywhere. All we have to do is come to work, do our part, lead, make money, and we're secure. So we should be loyal to our company. Self-aware. Great leaders are self-aware. Well, what does that mean? Self-awareness is the ability to tune in to your feelings, thoughts, and actions. Tune into your feelings, thoughts, and actions. Now I know we're all, for the most part, tough guys in here, trucking, and we don't like to talk about our feelings. But you have to. Being self-aware means that you understand how other people perceive you. If you don't understand how other people perceive you, you cannot lead effectively. Now, I tell you, this is the part where I tell you where I messed up early on in my career. And I don't know if I should be saying this on film or not, but I was an asshole. Okay? I was, I, I'm, I'm an old school trucking guy. I, I started, you know, this is all I've done my entire adult life is LTL trucking. And I was hardcore. And I said some things that I won't say on, you know, right now that Mike likes, but um, there's things that we did, man. And I said, and I, I, I was effective. I got things done, but I was not a great leader. I was not a great leader. And I performed an exercise, which I've asked a couple other people to do in this company, and, and it's, it's eye-opening. And if you ought to try it sometime, and that's this. Give a few people within your work environment the opportunity to tell you honestly how they perceive you. How they perceive you. Family members. How do they see you? If they're honest with you, they're going to tell you, th they're going to tell you the good stuff and they're going to tell you some stuff that you didn't really want to hear. But what I found out when I did it was I was way too hard. Way too hard. So I had to examine myself. I had to become self-aware and understand that I'm a strong on the disc profile. Almost everything lines up in the D. I'm that guy. I'm straightforward. This is this, it's black and white. But I can't always be that guy. Because depending on who I'm talking to, it might not be effective. So I have to learn to handle things different based on who I'm talking to. Being able to understand how other people perceive you gives, the ability, gives you the ability to have clarity before you speak and act. If you understand how you react to things, it gives you the opportunity to check that before you do it. But if you don't know, if you haven't really self-examined, and this, look, you, you might be a fresh terminal manager first time out, or you may have done this for a long time, it's still worth doing still worth doing. You might be surprised what you find out. Tony Robbins said self-awareness is one of the rarest of human commodities. I don't mean self-consciousness where you're limiting and evaluating yourself. I mean being aware of your own patterns. Great leaders are empathetic. Empathetic. We're going to get into our feelings a little bit. Empathetic means an ability to understand and share the feelings of another. Now I get it. Again, this is where I was not great, okay? I'm an old school trucking guy, and this is a little, little weak, right? But it's important. It's important. If you're in tune with the feelings of others, it makes you a better leader. The old saying, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care, right? If they don't trust you, if they don't believe you care about them, if you don't care about their feelings, they don't care what you know. They will tune you out. They'll tune you out. Alfred Adler said, empathy is seeing with the eyes of another, listening with the ears of another, and feeling with the heart of another. 
All right. Characteristics of a great leader. They are disciplined. Disciplined. Discipline means able to carefully control the way that you work, live, or behave, especially to achieve a goal. Disciplined. Great leaders rely on discipline, not motivation. Right? And why is that? Because if I relied on motivation, I wouldn't get things done most of the time. So, a lot of you are making fun of me today. I get up early every morning and I go to the gym. Every day. Every day. I mean, it's, there may be a handful of days out of the year that I don't go to the gym, but seven days a week, I get up every morning and I go to the gym and I work out. And you think it's because I'm motivated? You think I was motivated to get up at four o'clock this morning and go to the gym? No. It's because I've disciplined myself to do that every day. Every day. And work is no different. We should have a discipline to get our work done and do the right things every day. And if you're only doing it because you're motivated to do it, then I promise you, you got a lot of days when you're not getting things done. Motivation is the desire to act in the service of a goal. How many things do we do in the course of a day that we have no desire to do? Honestly, right? It's all of us. And it may be work related, it may be home related, but we all have those things. We have to do them anyway because we're disciplined to do them. Craig Rochelle said, discipline is the bridge between who you are and who you want to become. Who you are and who you want to become. John Maxwell said, small disciplines repeated with consistency every day lead to great achievements gained slowly over time. So the last thing is consistent. Characteristics of a great leader. They are consistent. Consistent means acting or done in the same way over time, especially as to be fair or accurate. Be consistent with corrective action. If we do corrective action on an employee for something and another employee does the same thing, we have to be consistent. There are no get out of jail free cards. We have to be consistent. You put everything in question when we're not. We have to be consistent. Be consistent with praise. This is one thing I wish we would do more of. Praise. Let people know they're doing a good job. With attention. This is the tough one, right? Because human nature says I like some people better than I like other people. Right? There's some people I just click with better than other people. But in the service center setting, you have got to be consistent with your attention. You have got to let everybody have some of your time. Because if you focus on one person all the time, you start to lose credibility. As leaders, we should be somewhat predictable in how we lead people and how we react to situations. Me and Mike talked about this a couple of weeks ago. You should be predictable. Now, we're going to talk about this a little bit later, but predictable means this. Nobody should ever be caught by surprise by corrective action. Ever. If we're leading effectively and coaching the way we should, and we're setting the groundwork, we're setting the standards, nobody should ever be caught by surprise by corrective action. Nobody should ever be caught by surprise by a performance review. If they are, you're not leading effectively. Abraham Lincoln said, these men ask for just the same thing, fairness and fairness only. This so far is in my power, they and all others shall have. It's a pretty smart dude right there. So let's review. Characteristics of a great leader, they're trustworthy, they're accountable, they're loyal, self-aware, they're empathetic, they're disciplined, and they are consistent. Okay? All right. What great leaders do. Let's talk about what great leaders do. First thing great leaders do, you've heard me say a hundred times, listen to their people. Great leaders listen to their people. 
if I have been to your facility and spent any amount of time there, you will be able to tell the rest of the group that one of the first things I do when I get there after I've done my initial dot walk and yard walk, Ryan has seen this, is I talk to the people. I go out and listen to them. Tell me what you see. Tell me what you know. Tell me what's going on in Raleigh. You know, let me know. And we listen to them. Let them talk. Great leaders spend time listening to those around them. Listen to their ideas about work. Believe it or not, you may have some guy out there on the dock that has a great idea about how to be more efficient on the dock. Because they see it every night. They see it every night. And remember this, we all started somewhere. I started in this business as an outbound dock worker. And I'm glad that people chose to listen to me over time, you know, and gave me the opportunity to have a voice. They may have a great idea. At the very least, they feel like they were heard, right? I sat and listened to a guy at a service center. I'm not going to say it because of you know, the camera. But I sat and listened to somebody talk, and they were telling me all this stuff that we could do. And I was listening to it, and I was thinking, okay, in theory, that's a pretty good idea. But based on our network, it would never work. But I let them talk about it. They talked the whole thing out, and I said, okay, I'll tell you what. My, my, my promise to you is, is that I'll at least think it over. I'm not promising you any that we'll come back and do it, but I'll at least talk to Morgan about it, which is what I did. <laughs> talked to Morgan, and Morgan said, no, we can't do that. So, <laughs> Listen to their personal stories. I know. Sometimes we just don't care, right? I mean, sometimes you, you just don't have time, maybe, maybe. You gotta make time. You gotta learn to care, okay? Listen to their stories. I've heard more fishing trip stories and football game stories and softball and kids baseball. I've listened to, more. you wouldn't believe the stories I've heard over the years. But when that driver or that dot worker left my office, the difference of the mood they were in we sent them out in a good attitude because talking about their family is important to them. It's important to them. Give them an opportunity. And believe it or not, it's important to them that you listen because you're their leader. It's important. I could tell you story after story after story of years of managing a terminal in Memphis, Tennessee, where I'm still friends with people that work for me. I still have drivers that call me from seven years ago. And it's not because I was the greatest manager in the world, it's because I listened to them. I listened to them. Listen to how they communicate to each other. This is very important. You need to be really aware of what's being said in your facility, how they communicate to each other, how your supervisors communicate to your dock people and your drivers, how your drivers talk to your dock people. You got to stop that stuff. If it's not good, you got to stop it. You got to get it under control. You got to make sure everybody's treating each other with respect. But you don't know that if you're sitting in the office behind that computer all day. Okay? Got to be out there. Bill Marriott, which I'm sure at some point somebody stayed in one of their hotels, the four most important words in the English language are what do you think? Listen to your people and learn. All right, second thing, the E in leadership, expect excellence. Now we talked about this a little bit a few weeks ago, right? Expect excellence. One of my favorite quotes, and Dan uses it all the time, Mike Ditka, in life you get what you tolerate. You get what you tolerate. Some of you have heard me say it at your facilities. If you accept average work, you will get average results. That's just a given. So why do we harp on certain things like cross dock and bills per hour? It's because we know there's more out there. We know, we're not, we know what we're getting in some cases is average work. And it's because the expectation hasn't been set. 
Service center goals set by the company should be considered the minimum acceptable result. Now I want to talk about that for a second because I know that hurts some feelings. When I was a service center manager in Memphis, Tennessee, I, got, I took over my first facility. I was still 26 years old. I had not yet turned 27. And I spent the first eight months trying to figure out how to be the absolute best in our company. And so as I was trying to figure it all out, I said, okay, if the goals are set and our terminal, we've been hitting goal, but our service center has never been service center of the year, then our goal is not, good, is not gonna be good enough to get that. So what we decided to do is we were gonna just forget about company goals and we were just gonna try to reach our excellence, being the best. We wanted to be the best at everything. After that first year, for 15 years, the next 15 years, we had the number one operating ratio in the company for 15 years straight. For no other reason, we changed the expectation. I had a dispatcher that got on board. Important, right? Dispatcher plays a pretty hefty role in your facility. He has a lot of ears that he talks to all day long, or she. I had a dispatcher that was on board. I had supervisors that were on board. Bill talked about it a few weeks ago. Get your people on board and change the expectation to excellence. If excellence is one of our choices, why would we choose anything else? Why would we accept average? You know? I mean, in reality, most people are average, right? That's why it's called average. But we don't have to accept average. You know what we did at our facility? In the interview process, we would tell people, look, we expect excellence here. We're the best in our, in our company, and we expect excellence. You can be average, but you can't do it here. So you need to determine whether you want to work here or not, because the expectations are high. You know what we found out? We didn't need as many people when we had excellent people. So why accept mediocrity when excellence is an option? So the A, always learning. Great leaders are always learning. There's three types of learning. There's experience, what we learn from our own successes and mistakes. We've all been there, right? You ever learn from your mistakes? I have, I've fallen into the stupid pit all by myself. Nobody helped me, I got there all alone. And we learn from it, hopefully, and we get better. Second kind of learning is wisdom. That's what we learn from other people's successes and mistakes. That's when I come to your facility or Mike comes to your facility and goes, hey man, I'm telling you this is not gonna work. Trust me, I tried it, it failed miserably. Right, Mike? I've been there. Let me keep you from making the same mistake I made. We do that to our kids, right? I know I do. I tell my kids all the time, gosh, don't do that. I'm telling you, I did it. It don't work. And the third type of learning is study. Reading, videos, podcasts, etc. Now, most of us got time to listen to a podcast if we're doing something or video. Reading seems to be the stumbling block for most people. It was my stumbling block. I hate reading, and I'm married to an author, so you can just imagine how that goes. So I can't stand reading. It's not my thing. It's just not something I have to read slow to retain the information. It's because I'm a dumb old truck driver, and that's just who I am, right? So I can't read fast, so it takes me a little while to get through a book. But I had a mentor in my life that pulled me aside one day and he said, you really need to be reading more. And I said, I can't, I just can't get through a book. I can't read a book. He said, and this is what he told me. He said, you don't need to read a book. You need to read a chapter. I said, well, that's stupid. If I'm reading a chapter, I'm reading a book, right? He said, no, you need to quit focusing on the book and focus on a chapter. Because if you read a chapter a day, you read a book in a month, most of them. If you read a book in a month, it means you can read 12 books in a year. Who can't read a chapter a day, right? 
Changed my life. Changed my life because I read a lot now. And I still don't like it, but I do it. I read it, you know, because I'm just it's, it's hard for me to sit still. Eric Hoffer said, in times of change, learners inherit the earth while the learned find themselves equipped to deal with the world that no longer exists. You have to be moving forward because the world will leave you behind. I sat and listened to a, a preacher preach one time and he said, you got you to preach with the Bible in one hand and the newspaper in the other. The Bible never changes, but you got to keep it current, right? Same thing in trucking. Trucking doesn't change. We've been doing, we do it the same thing. We, we pick it up. We move it from one truck to another. We take it to destination. We deliver it. We don't tear it up, right? That's trucking 101. But the way we do it's always changing, and we have to be up on it. The way we lead people is always changing because the world's always changing, and the rules are always changing, and people have gotten more sensitive. So we can't do all the same things we used to do. We have to be learning. We have to be learning. If you believe you're always the smartest person in the room, you're either not self-aware or you're not associating with the right people. One of the two. I like my one of the two things, Mike. You're either not self-aware or you're not associating with the right people. Because I promise you, you're not the always the smallest, smartest person in the room. And if you think you are, or if you really are, you're not hanging out with the right people. You know why I love hanging out with our directors and Dwayne? because I'm not ever the smartest person in the room. So I learn a lot. I learn a lot. You know why I love hanging out with Morgan? Because he's 27 years old and he's smarter than I am. Hang out with people that can add value to you, right? Learn from people. John Maxwell said, the more intentional you are about leadership growth, the greater your potential for becoming the leader you're capable of being. Never stop learning. D, y'all ready for this? Document everything. Great leaders document everything. Finish my sentence, Brad Paxton. If you didn't document it, huh? You got nothing. It, it, never, happened. it never happened. <clears throat> Guys, if you didn't document it, it never happened. That is the harsh reality of life, okay? Now, let me back up a second. Let me tell you why you document everything. This is one of those learning moments where you're going to learn from my mistakes, okay? So I managed Terminal for a long time in Memphis, Tennessee. My first trip to the EEOC office, I got taken to the woodshed. They wore me out. You know why? Because everything was up here. I had it all in my head. I knew everything that driver had done wrong. I had it all figured out. I was ready to make my statement. You know what they said? Where's your documentation? I had nothing. After that, guess what? I spent a little bit of time in the EOC office. I spent a little time in court. I spent a little time in mediator's office. But you know what I did from then on out? I just slid that file across the desk and said, it's all in there. Document everything. If you've got it documented, it will save you and it will save the company. Now, this is not, we're going to get to this, but this is just a way to start the process, okay? Say you have a, just a casual conversation with somebody. Hey, man, just to let you know I'm watching your production. Make sure we're doing the best we can, right? Send yourself a quick email. Subject line can be the employee's name. It's automatically dated and time stamped. Create a file with the employee's name to store it. Now you have an email of the conversation. Then we follow proper CCA protocol. <coughs> follow C CCA protocol. Do not make exceptions. Do not make exceptions. I promise you guys, exceptions will get you in trouble. Even if you think you're doing somebody a favor, even if you think, hey, this is a good guy, exceptions will get you in trouble. Involve HR when appropriate or if unsure about anything. That speaks for itself, right? 
That's going to be you if you don't document. You'll be sitting there in the EOC, EOC office like me saying, you know we talked about all this, and they're going to say, did you document it? All right, the next E. Empower the right people. Great leaders empower the right people. Most leaders are trying to figure out the right strategy. The best leaders are obsessed with empowering the right people. Craig Rochelle. Most great leaders are obsessed with empowering the right people. So, empower means to give someone the authority or power to do something. Great leaders identify skill sets in their people and empower them to do more based on their strengths. People will not grow until we empower them to do more. What does that mean? It can be something as simple as assigning dock doors. Guys, I've said this to several people in this room, and I don't know that anybody's done it yet, but simple as setting your dock doors up. Let me tell you a good way to keep your facility clean since that's a pet peeve of some of ours. Assign dock doors to your dock people. If you've got 50 doors and you've got 10 dock people, you say, okay, you got five doors a piece. These are your doors. I want the pads to be clean. I want the area around the dock to be clean. I want everything organized in your spot. You have just empowered that dock worker to take care of his part of the dock. And guess what? When you go to do your dot walk, which Mike's going to talk about later, when you go to do your dot walk and you walk out and see that doors 6 through 10 are a mess and the pads are dirty, you already know who they belong to. There's no question of who was told to sweep today. There's no supervisor. You know, well, you're going to have to talk to the supervisor because you're going to figure out why he didn't check behind it. But you're going to know exactly who was responsible for it. And let me tell you what else works about that. If that guy that's got 6 through 10 sees somebody that's got 1 through 5, push something off on his pads, he's going to have something to say about it, right? So empower people. Also empower your supervisors. Guys, let me speak to you as a former manager. You can't do everything. If you're micromanaging every piece of your terminal, you're not going to make it. You can't do everything. You've got to empower people to do more. That doesn't mean dump stuff. That doesn't mean slough off responsibility on people. That means properly teach people how to do a job and then empower them to do it. So the results are in, you're now in charge of this and you have that conversation. Empowering those around you to be heard and valued makes the difference between a leader who simply instructs and one who inspires. One who inspires. What great leaders do, they recognize achievements publicly. I feel like we've talked about this a lot. I feel like this is something that Dwayne has talked about quite a bit, recognizing achievements publicly. Dale Carnegie said, people work for money, but go the extra mile for recognition, praise, and rewards. The number one, you've heard me say this before, the number one reason people leave employers is because they feel undervalued. It's the number one reason. It's not pay. It's not pay. I promise you it's not pay. You know how I know? Because I had drivers that worked for me for years that were paid less than the competition. And they stayed with me to the bitter end because they were valued. The number one people leave, reason people leave is because they, don't, they feel undervalued. What we talked about earlier, communication. Are your people getting all the information? Because that's going to make them feel valued. They need to know what's going on. Recognizing the people in front of their peers creates a sense of pride for the employee. And it also creates a desire in their peers to obtain that same recognition, right? If you're having a driver's meeting and you tell somebody they did a great job and you give them a $10 Starbucks card or something, what's that do for the rest of them, right? They want that too. Everybody does. Everybody wants recognition for what they do well. <clears throat> Every driver slash doc meeting should include time where we're recognizing employees. 
Don't just go out there and go over the numbers and say we got to do better and say Tim's griping about cross dock and all that stuff. Go out there, cover that stuff, but then recognize the guys that did the job right in front of their peers. Let them know, hey, man, you killed it last night on cross dock. You were running 40% and now you're at 65. It takes 10 seconds. 10 seconds. It's very, very important. William James said the deepest principle in human nature is the craving to be appreciated. Great leaders set the example. Set the example. Strong leadership is set by example. And yes, Bob Hess, I used Andy Griffith. They kind of look huh? They kind of look alike. Yeah, you know. Set the example in attendance. Be on time, managers. <laughs> Be on time. Set the example. Work your hours. Work your hours. If you are coming in and working nine to three, you think your people don't see that? If you show up at eight and leave at 3.30, you think they don't see that? I hope nobody's doing that. I'm kind of just talking. Work your hours. Set the example in attire. The way you dress. Let me back up a second. Attire. Dwayne made a good point the last time we did this. Dress for the job that you're doing that day. So. If something's going on and you're having to step in, somebody called out and you got to go run a shift, that's one thing. But if you're running the terminal that day, you should be dressed accordingly. You should be dressed to the point where if a sales rep calls you out of the blue and says, hey, I got a customer on the hook, can you go make this call with me? You should be ready to go. And that's happened to me a bunch over the years. Bunch over the years. Set the example in attitude. Leaders set the tone. You may not be able to control every situation, but you can control your response to them. Guys, if you have a poor attitude, everybody in your terminal is going to have a poor attitude. You know how I know? Remember the old saying, if mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy? Remember that? Your mama. <laughs> okay. Not your mama, but your mama in your terminals. If you're not happy, nobody's happy. They feel it, they know it. It changes the tone of the entire terminal. You have got to set the example with your attitude. Doesn't mean things are always gonna be great. It just means how you respond to it, the way you handle yourself professionally sets the tone. And again, I tell you this, not because I always did it right, okay? If you want, I'm not gonna tell you this with that camera rolling. But I will tell you, outside of this, if you would like to know what I mean by not setting the proper example, I will tell you sometime. Attention to detail. Set the example in attention to detail. I had a mentor who came down and interviewed me to be an op the operations manager for the facility that I ended up managing. Um, and one of the things he told me was, I only need you to focus on three things. Details, details, and details. We called it the D-cube method. Details, details, details. Look at everything. Understand the details. I'm not, not going to get on your stuff, Mike. <laughs> Albert Schweitzer said a good example has twice the value of good advice. Now, the H, what great leaders do. They hold people Accountable. Guys, if we could just start holding people accountable, that'd be great. <laughs> that'd be great. You know, we've got to hold people accountable. Tell people that their problems aren't their fault and no one bats an eye. Try to hold them accountable and everyone loses their mind. Guys, we've got to hold people accountable. Culture changes over time, not overnight. 
Lack of accountability had to start somewhere. Creating a culture of accountability has to start somewhere. So we were talking about this a little bit earlier, right? We were talking about um, safety and different things, or how, or road drivers with delay time. So how do we change the culture? Because we've created the culture. Whether, regardless of what the rule states, we created a culture that has allowed certain things to happen. So how do we change it? Because that started somewhere. So how do we change it back? How do we get back? Well, the first thing you got to do, which is what Bob or somebody said, you got to hold a meeting. And you have to tell people, and you have to be, what did we talk about earlier? We have to be honest, right? We don't have a new policy that we're presenting to you. We have a policy that's been in place for a long time that we have failed as leaders to hold you accountable for. And we want to let you know up front that this is changing. We're going to start holding you accountable, holding everyone accountable for what the policy says. So we don't want you to get caught off guard when that happens. We want to make sure you understand exactly how we're going to handle this moving forward. So that's step one, right? Now we've com clearly communicated what's going to happen. So then the next thing is we coach them. This is how I want you to do it. When you get here, I need you to check with your supervisor. Let them know you're here because maybe they don't know. Maybe they didn't see you drive up. Make sure everybody knows that you're here. And then make sure your load's not ready and just not sitting in the windows. All those things, right? Coach them exactly how you want them to handle themselves at the facility. And then we have to hold them accountable. Then we have to hold them accountable. Accountability is not a bad word. For whatever reason, this has gotten a bad rap. Accountability. If we have clearly communicated the expectation and we've coached them on how we want it done, we have to hold them accountable for the result. We have to hold them accountable for the result. So one of the things, because this applies in all aspects of life. So I used to tell my kids that I was raising Proverbs 12.1 children. Anybody in the house know what Proverbs 12.1 says? Proverbs 12, 1 says, he who, who, he who loves instruction loves knowledge, but he who hates correction is stupid. And that's the New King James Version, in case you were wondering. He who loves instruction loves knowledge, and he who hates correction is stupid. And I used to tell my kids all the time, I'm not raising stupid kids. So if you get corrected, I, there was a, my daughter would kill me if she knew I was saying this on video. My daughter got in trouble. At school, when she was in high school, she came home, she was mad, she didn't like it. We walked through the situation, and I said, okay, so you were wrong. She said, yeah, but I shouldn't have gotten in trouble. I said, okay, but you were wrong. I'm not raising stupid kids. Proverbs 12.1, go apologize to your teacher. Right? Accountability. She was mad because she was being held accountable. Accountability is not a bad word. If we're setting the example by making ourselves accountable to others, it makes it much easier to hold other people accountable. To be able to look at somebody and say, hey, I'm accountable to people just like you are, right? If I don't hold you accountable, somebody's going to hold me accountable. And that's where we got to get. We got to get to the point to where if the dock worker's doing something wrong, then the supervisor should be holding them accountable. If the supervisor is not holding them accountable, then the operations manager should be holding the supervisor accountable. If the operations manager is not holding them accountable, then the manager should be holding them accountable, right? And if you're not holding them accountable, guess what happens next? Those guys back there have to hold you accountable. Because if we don't hold you accountable, we're accountable to that man sitting back there. And he's accountable to the wards. Everybody's accountable to somebody. Guys, we have got to do our jobs. Got to do our jobs and hold people accountable. All right. I'm doing good. We're almost through. What great leaders do? Invest time in their people. Invest time in their people. Spent time is wasted time, but invested time brings a return. Invested time, quality time with your people. Schedule time during your week to invest time in your people. 
schedule time. That's important. We're going to get to that in a little bit more in just a second. But schedule time. It should be part of your day, right? Just like everything else, there should be part of your day where you schedule time to spend time with people and invest time in them. Get to know them. Coach them on areas they can improve. Teach them in areas where they can grow. If you're showing up daily and only looking at numbers and trying to get done so you can go home, you are not leading. You are not leading. If you go through your day and you're not talking, investing time in your people, you are not leading. Lead your people. Invest time in them. Bob says it all the time, the greatest asset we have is our people. That's not just some cliche. That's the real deal. It's the greatest asset we have. What good's a truck if we don't have somebody to sit in it? What good's a forklift if we don't have anybody to drive it? It's our people. Invest time in them. They're worth it. You know how I know? You know how I know the company believes in it? Because you're sitting in here today because they decided to invest time in you. Brian Tracy said the value of a relationship is in direct proportion to the time that you invest in the relationship. What did we say earlier? People know whether you really care or not. If you're investing time in them, they'll know. They'll know. All right. And the P. What great leaders do? They prepare their days. They prepare their days. So, prepare yourself. Another work day is coming. Each day should start at the end of the previous day. If you get done with the last thing you're trying to get done that day and you rush out, how does your next day start? Right? You're going to walk into whatever you walk into. Don't leave until you set a plan for the next day. Have a plan. Walk out knowing, driving home knowing what you're going to do the next day. All right, write down three things. I'm pretty sure I talked about this once on a call, but I'm going to talk about it again anyway. My mentor, my greatest mentor, told me one time, man, write down three things. I said, what are you talking about? He said, write down three things you got to get done tomorrow. And no matter what happens, you're going to get those three things done. Changed my world, guys. Write down three things. Now, it could be anything. It might be, I noticed that a certain driver was not having a good day today. I need to check on that driver tomorrow. Write it down. I need to make sure that I go and make myself present in a doc meeting tomorrow. Write that down. And then make sure it happens. Hold yourself accountable to the three things that you write down. A written plan is more likely to withstand the curveballs of the day. It's one thing to go in and think, nah, I'm going to do this and this and this. It's another thing to have it on paper in front of you that you can check it off as you do it. Check it off as you do it. I still do that, guys. Even at my home office, I still write down three things. Before I shut my computer off at night, I write down three things I got to do the next day. Make each day your masterpiece. Everybody know who John Wooden is? Greatest college basketball coach of all time. John Wooden. So the story behind Make Each Day Your Masterpiece, when John Wooden graduated high school, his dad, they didn't have any money, and his dad gave him a card. And on that card, had a list of things to do through life. And one of those things was Make Each Day Your Masterpiece. And what does that mean? Because that's kind of a weird statement, right? Make Each Day Your Masterpiece means have some say and have some control and do things with intention. Don't just show up every day reacting and responding to things that are going on in your world. Be intentional about your day. When you write those three things down, get them done. Be intentional. Understand that during that day, you have the opportunity to make a difference in somebody's life that day. Guys, I don't know if you realized how profound that is. I don't know if you realize what kind of role you're actually sitting in. Some of you guys have been doing this a long time. I'm sure you know. Some of you haven't. You have the opportunity to make a difference in somebody's life. Guys, I can look back in my 
career, 28 years in this business, and I can tell you I specific people who invested time in me and it changed who I became in this business because they invested that time in me. You have that opportunity. You're in that role to make people special, to make something, take that person, that piece of clay there and make something out of it. You have that opportunity. If you prepare your day, you are less likely to have to repair your day. Benjamin Franklin said, by failing to prepare, you are preparing to fail. All right, let's review. I'm doing good, Dwayne. I'm almost done. Let's review what great leaders do. They listen to their people. They expect excellence. They're always learning. They document everything. Empower the right people. Recognize achievements publicly. Set the example. Hold people accountable. Invest time in their people. And they prepare their days. Characteristics of a great leader, they're trustworthy, accountable, loyal, self-aware, empathetic, disciplined, and consistent. And the foundations of all that are those two words right there, excellence and integrity. Everything we do should be done with excellence and integrity. If that's not you, you need to reevaluate some things. If you're not, if it's not in you to want to be the very best, you guys that are in the larger facilities, if you don't want to make better numbers than the guys and the other guys are better, I don't know what to tell you. I, it, that drove me as a manager. Memphis and Nashville were at it, man. We, it was healthy competition. Healthy competition. You know, my people knew if we didn't beat Nashville on something, they were going to hear about it. <laughs> You know, excellence and integrity. I think integrity speaks for itself. I will tell you, I can't speak for everybody because I'm not in the position to make these decisions, but I can tell you that over my career, for the people that work for me, you are allowed to make some mistakes. And, you know, we, we worked on those things. But if you had an integrity issue, you didn't work for me very long. You didn't work for me very long. And I hope that we don't have people in our facilities that are working for us in leadership positions with integrity issues. If we do, we need to get them addressed. Because that's what we have. It's all we have in this life, really, at the end of the day, is our word, right? What we say. We do what we say we'll do. And be the very best at it. Be the very best at it. It should bother you if you're not being the very best at something. You know, I promise you this. If you make goal, the company's going to celebrate. But if you only make goal, I don't know that I'd be celebrating. Because I'd want excellence. I'd want to show the company, man, I'm better than you think I am. And it will work if you get your people on board. All right. Guys, I appreciate your time. Thank you. I got done early for you. Got a little extra time.